You ready for your interview? Let's go up here and sit down. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do a sit down. Interview time with Mr. Let's Dig. So, Exciting. yeah. Fun fact, I don't like interviews. See, look at that. <laughs> see, see how I'm coming through for y'all? Getting it done. Uh, George asked how much of the logs can be used for firewood. That seemed to be a pretty big thing in the whole build, right? And I think every time you cut down woods is... I mean, you can you know. use the whole thing if you really wanted to, but do you see people knocking down your gate to come in here and get it? No one came. Nobody came. Never. Everybody always tells me to save firewood, save firewood. Well, I've done that a couple of times, and I get to the end of the job, and nobody has showed up to get it, yep. and I end up having to pay to get rid of it. Not a single I've person. I've already done, done burning, and I'm like, nope, not anymore. Oh, this is another one. Lots of people ask this. Shaw Bones, B-O-N-E-Z, asked, why not shred for mulch? Would you like to pay four times what I'm charging you to shred it up? Because that's what it costs. The answer is no. I didn't think so. It has its purposes. I mean, if you wanted to go in there and mulch all those little trees down, yes. But mulching doesn't get the stumps up. So if we went... And even, I mean, they make grinders that come here and shred up everything we got, but then all the stumps are left. And you're trying to go pasture. If you go and mulch all that stuff up, you're going to have like four to six inches of mulch on the ground. You wouldn't be able to get grass to grow for like three years. And it's just, I don't like it. Plus, it, it's very expensive. Oh, this one we get a lot. It's actually been answered on the channel a lot, but maybe, you know, people watching this, it'll reach more people. Ken Goss is the last one that asked it, so I put his name down. What's the 18 for? Uh, I was 18 years old when I started YouTube. Let's see, I started an email. It was um, my Yahoo email, and I was 18 when I did it. So, so there you go. Oh, this was kind of good. I've seen this one a few times too, but Rusty Steel. Does Chris get dizzy when he gets a swing in the excavator around? I do not get dizzy in the excavator. I Honestly, I hate running the skid steer. It just bounces you around so much, it kind of gets you like motion sickness. But after about two hours in the skate chair, I've had all I want for the week. You know, that gives me a question to ask. It might be on here somewhere. Do you plan out what piece of equipment you have to use when? Exactly. Like when I schedule everything, like the next six months, I know where everything's going. This and that skater is going to the next job. Skid steer is going to another one. It's just you got to plan everything else because like I might have one job. I don't need the excavator on but I need the dozer on there for like a month. So I've got to be able to plan the job so that I don't need the dozer where the excavator is going to go because I might work over there if it's too wet to do my grading jobs. You really need like two of everything, but you know, this stuff's very expensive. So you've got something planned for like on, on my job, like you've been here not quite two months, about what, six weeks, I think we yeah. figured it out. And you went and did three or four little projects or yeah, started on some uh, stuff or did some things at least two or three like little small jobs right to yeah. fill in because something yeah yeah and plus you don't want to move the excavator around because you don't have a trailer of your own that you throw yeah. that on right you have and to pay somebody to move it i get one well like i said this equipment's been here for two months so why should i buy a low boy and a tractor trailer plus it takes a special license yeah well, i mean yeah it's, and you permits and all that stuff your insurance and tags you know tags on track trailers probably plus nine thousand dollars a year you just pass that cost on to me correct <laughs> so would you like the one-time fee or would you like to be paying for that while it's you're like right well now? it's here for two months so now i gotta charge, charge you for accordingly 20 percent of the <laughs> cost of the trailer oh this was funny ian asked can you please ask Chris whether he was allowed mashed potato and gravy when he was a kid? <laughs> He's yeah. like, I'll leave it to you to figure that out. <laughs> I assume that has to do with something with the pressing of the mashed potatoes and dirt is and similar. Blood, That's gotta be where it's I coming from. I love mashed potatoes and gravy. There you go. Ian, comment if that's what you meant. You said you left it to us to figure out. I'm assuming that had to do with the mud piles. It's been a long day. He's gotten, my brain cells are fried after <laughs> beating around out here for yeah. two months. Why doesn't Chris wear, Joseph, why doesn't Chris wear a microphone? You want to know why I don't wear a microphone? Because <laughs> I can hear fine and dandy in the videos. I don't know what people are watching videos on they can't hear, but I'll be honest. The main reason I don't, I don't like anything on me. Yeah. I, People think I'm just sitting in the equipment all day long. Can you verify that? I My videos behind the scenes is what got people, I think, seeing that you get out a lot. 
Like it's when a I ton. was clearing, you know, right. in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, honestly, until you had your little microphone, I didn't even know they had a wireless one. So just, well, you saw the problems with it though. Yeah, and then so because it flip, it's on your shirt and it flips, and all of a sudden the audio sounds horrible or something, you know, craps just, out. You know, my main focus is to actually work. I mean, the videos they come with what I'm doing. And, uh, but every day when I go to work and you can probably tell the days where I'm like really busy cause the videos kind of suck. Cause you know, it is my, you know, at the end of the day I have to work. It's just not all, yeah. you know, video. And luckily tech. you have a customer like me that yeah. sent you some extra video. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, I hate stuff clipped on me and you know, the microphone would just get knocked off somewhere out there and I'd run over it. And honestly, I don't have time to like edit all the sound in with video, the daily video and Unless you just want one good video a week, this. Why don't you get Mr. Beely to video your other jobs? That was a question that came up. Because he's got a job. And he, yeah. It probably pays better than. Uh... When buying a used excavator, what would be the top things to look for that would make you walk away from the deal? Bob asked that. Uh, I mean, there's so much stuff to look at. Uh, just get on it and see how wore out it is. I mean, you can tell as soon as you run it if you've been on equipment a lot. Doesn't anybody say yourself so wore out all the clinging and the ringing and the uh, when are you going to change the bearings? Everybody said my tracks need to be greased, but it finally rained. And yeah, have you heard that? It noise since. Yeah, but when see? it didn't rain for two months, yeah, it was a little squeaky. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to look for, you know, just your undercarriage and just overall how the machine's been treated, how beat up it is. You can kind of tell everything. Just... Honestly, if you don't know a whole lot about equipment, just get you a mechanic to go over there and look at it. You can hire somebody to look at it. That'd be my advice too. And I don't, I've never bought any big machinery, it's but kind of like taking a used cars, car to a, yeah. a mechanic, just have them look over it and see. Yeah. I think that's, but smart. it's still a gamble. It is. Russ from Maryland had a few questions. I think this kind of fault, you know, we just, we had already talked about this some in the channel that we, you know, this is about the channel, not about personal. I don't know if this is personal though, since you do have a farm, but yes, if you were going to chat some more about the animals on the homestead, I don't know if you, I haven't looked at old, old videos. So I don't know if you've ever done that. I mean, uh, it's just cows. Okay. Cows gotcha. The same thing so it's not like, uh, you aren't really doing the, or maybe you are, I don't know the, um, like I'm going to do some of the permaculture deal where you fence them off into smaller pastures and move them every day and all that stuff. You don't have time for that, right? There you go. So maybe. Maybe if he gets more time, we'll film some of that in the future. Nice to see Tim on the job. Timmy. Timmy. Uh, in the dialogue, is Uncle John always so quiet? I'm just going to read what he said. There seems to be Chris's business and John's business and no monkey business. So that was just the comment. But has Chris thought about small dump truck or front end loader to move dirt versus running skid steer around? Which I replied to him already that... Funny enough, it was the same day that we, we brought one in. We used the skid steer one day and then realized, hey, a dump truck would be better. And, and that's what I did. But yes, I mean, there's a place for everything. But, you know, eventually you got to pay for this stuff and it gets very expensive. And, you know, it's not practical to own everything for something you might not use but once. 20. I don't think people realize how much this stuff costs. Yeah, we might talk about some of that. So we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll, I got something to add to that. Oh, nice. So yeah, it's not just. And remember, and we'll probably touch on this. It's not just the cost of the piece of equipment. You know, cost to maintain all this stuff. You know, and and sure, some people run a car into the ground, never change the oil. You know, but that's not what Chris does, and what any serious operator does. They have to. You know, you think of changing the oil every three thousand miles, and this stuff is all an hour. So maybe we'll touch base more on that. Uh, Rick Lane comments a lot on my stuff. I don't know if he does on, I'm sure he does on yours because he came from your channel. He's from Holland. He says, in Holland, the majority of our excavators are wheeled, but guess the U.S. is a bit tougher to work the soil. So do you prefer tracked above wheeled excavators? That would be correct. Yeah, because you want to get a wheeled, wheeled excavator wheeled. anywhere here. Holland pavement princesses. Ah, makes so sense. They stay on that. But no, it's, <laughs> it's completely different type of workload around here. As you can tell, like tracks aren't enough sometimes, so. Yeah, yeah. Right. everything has its purpose, but wheels are not for me. Why didn't we sell all the lumber and just pay for the whole project? Because I'm still waiting <laughs> for my million dollar settlement to come through. <laughs> <laughs> you see how long those things laid here? Yeah. That's, cause that's how long it took me to get rid of them. Yeah, there you go. See, and we could have just burned them. And it would have just been gone. And when I had to cut anything, but saw no. anything, nothing. I cut them all, so I was going to get rid of them. <laughs> right. It was personal at that point. <laughs> uh, last question on the list is, uh, 
really it's more for me, I guess, was why didn't we just get a, our own sawmill to saw up the why wood? Why didn't you, Jeff? Why didn't you buy a $60,000 sawmill? They, no, he's, they're talking about the, the miser ones that are oh, like eight grand. Yes, that way you can cut a board that starts at two inches and goes to one inch by the time you get to the other end of it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah we actually talked about that early on. And so if we stacked all this and then cut it all, and then maybe with the price of lumber the way it is now, maybe it would have evened out. And for small projects, you know, if you've got some lumber and you're going to they build. let you frame a residential house and rough cut lumber anymore. Well, there you go. That's the, that's the real answer, did I guess. I did not know that. They will not let you frame a house and rough cut lumber. Huh. Well, there you go. That's why, because I don't care about doing all that work to be able to build some more chicken houses. So You can build all the barns and little right. cabins you want to, but. From what I've been told is you can, interesting. It's all got to be mill. I mean, it's got to be dry because if you go and stick frame that in rough coat. Oh yeah, it's got to be dry. It's never been dried out. My God, your walls going to shrink <laughs> up a half inch. Yeah, easy. Yeah, you know, everything's going to crack and fall down. It's like putting deck boards on a trailer. You know, you put them up nice and tight, and then two years later, you can um, <laughs> about step through. You can about step <laughs> through them. They've shrunk up so much. All right, so this is the number one biggest question I've gotten and I've avoided the whole time and probably not still going to get a full answer. But what does this, what did this project cost? That's the short version of various ways people have asked the same question. Yeah, and it's got so many variables and, and that's one thing I don't talk about because um, it's just, there's so many variables to it, you know, like this one we were able to burn it, haul the wood off. But if you're doing like a house light and you can't burn, all that's got to be hauled off. And it just, stuff costs so much more for different stuff. And, you know, you hate to be like, hey, this, I'll just use a random example. I was like, hey, this cost $1,000 an acre to, to clear. Well, then you might go do a, a uh, I mean, I've cleared land for $1,000 an acre and I've cleared land for $20,000 an acre. But when you have to put all that stuff on a dump truck, it's like 60 dump truck loads and you got to haul it off and clear it and you know it gets very expensive and it's just if you tell somebody hey it's, it usually averages this much and then you they you know they're always going to look at the cheap number he's like hey yep. he said he could clear that for a thousand dollars an acre and he's got 10 acres <laughs> and you know he wants it done for 10 grand and reality, why does he now want fifty thousand? and then yeah in reality it's going to be like 50 or 60 or something like that and he just i, I just don't Plus another problem that would happen is because I've run into this in my business, you know, all of a sudden you're looking at that and somebody that doesn't even live here or even let's say they do, they get that, they get a rough idea of the price and then they end up hiring some other person because they're cheaper and reality, maybe Chris would have done it for the same price if he looked at the project. Yeah. That's a big, you know, I would think that would definitely, definitely happen. Plus. And then the cheaper guy isn't always going to do the same quality. I mean, right. yeah, it doesn't take rocket scientists to clear land, but if you end up with a mess that you can't do anything with when it's all said and done, what good was it? And a lot of stuff, people kind of get a little bit sticker shocked on, you know, it might only be a couple day job, but you got to bring all this equipment in. This has got to be hauled in. That's got to be hauled in. That's got to be hauled in. I mean, literally just looking at your job. I bought all this stuff new, and it was, uh, all this stuff was used, not new. And it's like three hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of equipment, and not only does the equipment cost a lot of money, burns a lot of diesel fuel. This needs a uh, depth sensor put in it. They got to pull the whole tank out. Eighteen hundred dollar repair. I got to do that next week. This is having problems. It's got to go back in. It's, Losing its fuel prime. That's got to be what we're going to do. Yeah, we are, and we changed hoses on. I changed. We, as in you, changed yeah, hoses changed on that hoses while it was here. That. It's just equipment's going to break down, brand new or not. That needs the intercooler hose. Yeah, I heard that yesterday. It's a rubber hose. They want eight hundred dollars for that rubber hose. For a rubber hose. You can't go anywhere and get that hose because it's custom made for that machine. So. Hmm. So there's a. Yeah, I mean there it is. So right there's over. By the time you figure in what those hoses were and what that's going to cost, you're talking about. Over three grand of the profit from this job is just going to go repair. just to repair stuff, which, you know, but repairs are part of it. I mean, that's why that's people see the number and just think, oh, it's all profit. Yeah. That's the, that's the fun part. I mean, you run that. I mean, I don't even know. Actually, I wrote the hours down when I changed the oil. We'll see how many hours I put on this. Now, keep in mind, I haven't ran this every day, but yes, that'll open 
Uh, what's today's date? That was May 22nd. It's the 26th now, so just a little over a month. That was $41.95. It's at $42.97. So in just over a month, I've put 100 hours on this machine out here working, and I probably had... I was here probably three weeks before I changed the oil in it, so I probably got 150, 175 hours just with this machine on this project. And, and as you see, all these machines got used on the project. Yeah. So it takes, it's a, it's a lot of maintenance and upkeep and everybody doesn't understand the insurance. Mm. All this stuff has got insurance. In case he knocked down a tree and took out the 1910 house. You got of course, your... he said I should have burned it down to begin with. <laughs> then you got your liability insurance and you got your workman's comp insurance. In case he runs over Mr. Beely good because yeah. he's a fool getting too close out there trying Legally, to film. I can't sue him. <laughs> or if you know you run over me or something out here on the floor with her. I run the drone into you while you're I working. I can't sue you for you know damages that you caused me. So, yeah. You pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a year in insurance just so... You can't sue anybody. If I had to buy this machine brand spanking new today, with that bucket, thumb, coupler, and everything, we're probably looking at close to a quarter million dollars. Takes a few uh, pawn jobs to it pay for that. It takes a lot. And not only that, I mean... Well, unless your budget was 150000 yes, like one person you thought. Know, you know, I'll adjust the invoice accordingly. <laughs> I'll come to that. How about that? Perfect. Good. Good. <laughs> but, no, I mean, and then you're, you know... And it's another thing I had to eat when I priced this job in last year or in January. Diesel fuel was a dollar twenty nine a gallon. Right. It's three dollars a gallon now. So I mean, it you start burning, you know, hundred and seventy five hours, and you burnt, you know, fifty gallons a day, four or five gallons an hour. It pipe went up. It adds up. Pipe went up on the materials. Yeah. The pipe back there that I bought in February had doubled in price. Yeah, so, I mean, that right there, I mean, so, you know, I think some people commented that the over your overhead is lower. And I don't know, imagine how your overhead is really low, unless you're, you know, the competition, so to speak, is people that are running a bunch of guys, maybe I, that yeah. would be more overhead. But. Now, if I worked every day, obviously, I probably could have done this in a month. But, you know, trying to work with my uncle and, you know, full time and then do this as well, it just, you work when you can work. But it kind of worked out good because it was so dry we couldn't burn anyway. So it gave time to get all that out and get it dried up. And then when time come to burn, we burned. All right. I hope I was able to answer some of your important questions. Yeah, you answered some of them. Had a great time out here. It's been fun. You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, I'm still I'm still on the clock till I leave. So <clears throat> what's another 10 questions? Oh, when's this over? <laughs> now. Click. <laughs> <laughs>